Next on BYU Sports Nation, after a bye week, what do you expect from the Cougars this week against Northern Illinois and then Boise State and Utah? Yoli drops 35 points in the Cougar tip-off, but was that the most impressive thing we saw on Friday? Mm, Plus, it's a Maddich Monday, and it's Taysom Hill, Mr. Utility in the NFL. Let's go! This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Jerem Jordan and Brian Logan. What is good? BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play right here in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Monday, October 22nd. What is good? I'm Jerem Jordan. Spencer Linton is doing hot yoga right now. So I'm teamed up with a man who loves Vaseline on his arms in cold weather, Brian Logan. Yes, that is a fact, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Studio B. Thanks, man. Been a minute. I, I know. I feel like this is like I'm a guest. I feel like I'm, I'm a guest. There was, there was a time when you were challenging me a, a, in a way a few years ago where you said, I'm not a guest. I wouldn't I'm call it a co- challenge. I'm the co-host. I wouldn't call it a challenge. You were trying to overtake me in Twitter followers. I mean. That didn't happen. You know, you have to be competitive <laughs> to be, for it to be a challenge. Yeah, I've been waiting for the competition to show no, up. No, no. I mean, look, sometimes there's politics that are involved. So, you know, starting quarterbacks that should be starting don't start and yeah. things like that. What, what, are you, what, are you, what are you saying? I have no idea what you're inferring. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just happy you're back. I'm just saying. I'm the backup. You're the starter. That shouldn't be starting. I'm just That's playing. I'm just playing. Starting. I'm just playing. It's a joke. I'm the starting quarterback I today. Know. Look out, man. Let's go. <laughs> Here's what we've got for you today on the show. ESPN's Trevor Maddich in 15 minutes. Let's break down this matchup with Northern Illinois. BYU a a seven-and-a-half-point favorite. Tremendous defense, top 25 defense uh, coming into Provo. We'll break it down in 30, how the Cougar football opponents have fared, plus the always entertaining midseason bowl projections. Where is BYU predicted to go, where they probably won't later? And in 40 minutes, women's soccer coach Jennifer Rockwood joins us in studio. This team is tied for first place. With top 10 Santa Clara, who is in the house Saturday night. We will discuss it coming up. Let's go. With Coach Rockwood. But first, let's get you today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. BYU basketball kicked off the season with Cougar tip-off as Yoli Childs had a game-high 35 points. Somebody guard this man. The white team beat the blue 81-77. Joshir Hardnett had 18 points, including this three. Now at the hard net near midcourt, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Hard net, between the legs dribble, up for three to sheer hard net. In a groove, he's got 16 points. Ended up with 18 as BYU uh, beats BYU for the win. The Cougars host (laughs) St. Martin's this Wednesday night on BYU TV. Three former Cougars were in action this weekend, and Kyle Van Noy scored his first yeah. NFL touchdown. Yay to Kyle after scooping up a Dante Hightower block punt. Very nice. Um, that was in a win against the Bears. Yeah. Awesome. Number one BYU women's volleyball sweeps Pepperdine 26-24, 13-8. Uh, 25-8 against a team that had one loss in the league. That was impressive. Ronnie Jones-Perry led the team with 14 digs, 12 kills. The Cougars are 20 and oh, they continue to roll. That's not fair, man. What do you, how do you stop that? It's kind of like Alabama. How do you stop it? You don't. You don't. No, you, you, don't. Don't. you just you just don't. It is what it is. BYU women's soccer beat St. Mary's thirty three to one Saturday. Sophomore. Sorry, did you say thirty three to one? Uh, no, I said three to one. Oh, okay. See, so sometimes I stutter a little bit when I read. <laughs> Well, take care of that, and then maybe you're the starter. <laughs> Sophomore McKaylee Moore scored two goals. I know you about to say that, but I stopped you. Mm. <laughs> not fast enough. Thirty-three to one would be quite the. <laughs> not fast, you're not soccer. fast enough to start, Jim. Uh, I am starting. Rise and shout! It's time for what's trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's what's trending on BYU Sports Nation. Brian, we like power here. Friday night marked the beginning of games for the BYU men's basketball team with the annual Cougar tip-off. There was much to see and enjoy. Let us discuss and uh, perhaps over-evaluate what happened in one single intra-squad scrimmage. So, Brian, what or who impressed you the most from the Cougar tip-off? I would definitely have to say it is, um, or it was Yoli's and, and the way he dominated, man. I mean, clearly, um, you know, he's, he's progressed throughout his career. He's getting better and better. But I think this offseason, man, he went to Balsahar University. and He transferred for temporarily? He, he, he transferred for a quick second, um, you know, improved his game, came back, and, you know, you see the progression. You see 
his perimeter shooting. Mm. Um, you see how dominant he was. I, I mean, I, I just feel like um, his his presence as a whole, man, and just his attitude and the, the look in his eyes that you know you you're not gonna stop me. You know, you can't you can't stop me. And I think I saw that throughout the entire game. But but the thing that I love the most is the perimeter shooting and how he stepped up his game. And that leads us to the stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Yoey Child shot 66.666666% on Friday. <laughs> I hate you saying say that many six. I hate saying I hate saying. No, the rule is you can't say three in a row, including say 66. three to five, three from five from a three. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, I mean, I mean, I think, uh, you know, being the player that he was last year and then coming back this year and, and being able to increase your arsenal of weapons, man, makes you that much more dominant. And, and just the overall just swag of the team, man. Just I, I just love the confidence and the swag. I personally feel like I haven't seen that in the last couple of years. So I feel like everybody is on one accord. Everybody has that same killer look and that same mentality. I'm excited for this year's team. To me, that's tied into the style of play for BYU. Last year, that was not the style that matched the personnel. I, I know that Heath Troy was trying to mix it up and play championship style offense and defense, which is value possession yeah. and uh, you know good, good defense. Yoli Child, so impressive, right? 35 points. He made three threes. It was his first three threes, by the way. Uh, scored 17 points in the first nine minutes. I mean, there's no one on, there's no one on BYU's team that can guard him. What do like, you do? Like, Yoli Childs is clearly the best player on this team. He has worked on his game in the offseason. He has a, a three-point shot now, which is awesome. Ball so hard, you. This style matches the personnel. It really does. Quincy Lewis is heading that up with Tim Lacombe and Lee Kamard, and I think this BYU team is more suited to play to their skill set. Zach Selyus looked like the guy from his freshman year. TJ Howes, Josh Shearhart, we saw what more of what we expected from him. So I'm excited to see this team play. They play again again uh, Wednesday, St. Martin's on BYU TV in an exhibition game. Well, I, I remember when I played, man, you know, Bronco would always say, you have to know what you're doing. And if you do that, you can play at a high level, right? You could be fast, you can be quick. And, and so, you know, thank you for BYU basketball for entertaining us during this bye week. But let's get back to football. Jerem, with this bye week, what do you expect with this BYU team? I expect BYU to be rested, prepared, uh, ready. The old prepared versus rusty thing off of bye week. It's going <laughs> to be a fun storyline Saturday, right? Oh, BYU hasn't played in a week. What to, what's going on? Or, oh, wow, they were really prepared. Northern Illinois also had a bye week, by the way. Um, we see this in the NFL wildcard games. The yeah. team that played the week before is actually better off most times than yeah. the team that had the bye. Um, and I use a really good defensive team. I'm interested to see this matchup between Zach Wilson off his first start, had a bye week to kind of dig in a little bit more on the BYU offense, at, maybe add a couple plays, yep. you know, with Jeff Grimes that's, or catered to Zach Wilson. And then see what this team can do because that was a really nice performance against Hawaii. And Zach Wilson's the guy. And NIU is a tremendous defense, top 25 in the following. Fumbles, second in the country. Mm. 10 forced fumbles that they've gathered in. 15 and then 10. They got 10 of them. 22nd rush defense, 13th in sacks, 21st in tackles for loss, 21st in turnover margin. Mm. This will be a test. However, the NIU offense, not good. Bottom 10 in points and yards. So the BYU Johnson. defense can clock in on Saturday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%, man. I, I, with, with me, I just, I just want to see them progress, the, the entire team. And, you know, you, you hope to see that. That's not just a win, then? That's, it, it's more than just a win. It's more than just a win to me, man. Because a loss would be, wouldn't be progression, because, right? No, no, it, it would be. It would be. What? It, it would be. Listen, Explain. because – because you can progress, meaning I cleaned up my my penalties, I, I, I executed on every almost every play, I got first downs, I you know whatever the case is, right, or in whatever category. But if you lose the game, you can lose the game because your opponent is just better than you. There's times you feel like Northern there, Illinois is better there than is, BYU. I, no, no, okay, I, no, I, I'm not saying that. I'm you, I'm answering your question specifically. So specifically, that's 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 my that's my answer, right? You can progress. And, and and improve and still lose a game. I feel that way too, but not against Northern Illinois at home. You've got to win that game. Okay, I give you that. <laughs> I give you that. I give you that with Northern Illinois. it's just like last year when if you it's Cal. It's different, it's, right? It's right, you're Northern right. It's, it's, it, right, because you you are expected to lose only just based off of talent, right? On paper, you're expected to lose. You're this seven game, you have seven and a half point favorite. This game, initially. man, you're expected to win. Yeah. Right. So you're you're absolutely right with that. But that's what I want to see. I just want to see them improve, progress. 
uh, you know, in every in every single phase of the game, yeah. penalties, etc. The Cougs have five games left in the regular season. One in October coming up this Saturday. Then November happens with two notable games on the docket. So let's play a little. What's the chance? What's the chance? BYU Sports Nation. What's the chance? Yeah. <laughs> uh, BYU. What's the chance? BYU wins one or both games against Boise State and Utah in November. So I was a little bit confused about this. Um, so I'm going to answer both of them, right, uh, individually. I'm going to say 50%. It's both. Both. That's really high to me. B-O-F-F. Both. Why 50? I just, B-O-F-F. I just... <laughs> <laughs> we're we're okay. sending you to the spelling Okay, okay. May, maybe maybe in it, with, 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 with Boise, um, may, maybe it's a little bit lower. Maybe I, I, I think that's Wait, always. Well, versus Utah? No, Boise. Boise. <laughs> okay, break it down. So, um, well, I, I think they have a higher chance of beating Utah. I would say that. What? And, and, and Wait, because, what? because, listen Why? to me, listen to me, listen to me. What in Be- the world? Let me go. Let me talk. Give me 10 seconds. Okay. Rivalry you games, man. You can't do it in 10 Ri- seconds. Rivalry games, anything happens, throw everything out the window, stats, numbers, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Anything goes in a rivalry game. I've seen crazy things happen. That's why, that's why I believe that they have a better chance. Too many emotions, man. There's a lot, there's a lot in going into this game, dude. I, w- I was on the team that beat Utah last, 2009. He's can got- you suit up this year? We need you. I can't. I can go as Mike Shelton. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you're talking about both, yeah. I say like 5%. Both? Mm-hmm. No. The, Utah's really good. Beauty's best shot is Boise State. I disagree with you a lot there. Just that game, ESPN's football power index says 17% chance to beat Boise State. You guys never won up there, but of those four meetings, three have been decided by one point. Um, yeah. Is this BYU offense good enough to go outscore Boise State on its own home turf? San Diego State was, but San Diego State is a 6-1 and one team who's only lost it to Stanford. That is a good team. Okay, Utah is going to certainly be a tough, tough challenge for BYU. The Utes are rolling right now. They're in the top 25. Defensively, Utah is top 10 in all the stuff that matters. That's, uh, that's the thing that's scary. I watched the, the I, I, SC, right? Your argument is that it, it's chaos. Like, it, here's my argument. Yeah. Utah's good on defense. Like, if BYU can't run the ball, BYU can't win right now. And, and Utah right now is stifling fools. Boise State is more of an even matchup, although I think BYU is going to be a dog by double digits going into that game. BYU's had a better chance to be Boise State than Utah. All I'm saying is this, man. We all hear those stories of, like, people getting superhuman powers, right? Like mothers helping babies and things like that. Yes, I've seen Rocket Man. Yes, yeah, right, right. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. That's what happens in rivalry games, man. Well, we haven't seen that in the last few rivalry games. I would like to see it, and it's on the road. I mean, all these things just scream that BYU's not going to win that game. But... Perhaps Zach Wilson and this offense grow a bit and give themselves a chance yep. against Utah Lake. All I'm saying is, and then I'm going to go to the next one because I know we run out of time. I, but, I, I just I throw I throw everything out the window. That's what, like stats. I'm usually you know me, man. I'm usually stats black. I, or white. I close the I, window and I, keep it warm inside. Nope. I'm like nope. Anything happen? What's the chances presented by the way by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event? John Sigler of USA Today wrote a story about the best player in the entire universe, Taysom Hill, over the weekend. Still on that. And he asked if he could become the best utility player of all time in the NFL. Listen to the stats, Jerem. This is from Sunday. Let's hear it. Okay. So um, he had 35 carries. Or 35 yards on six carries. I was going to say. (laughs) Converted a fourth down on a fake punt. Mm Mm-hmm. And two tackles. Okay. So, JJ, what is Taysom Hill's ceiling as an NFL player? I think it's as a starting quarterback. Uh, if and when Drew Brees isn't the guy due to retirement and or other reasons, uh, Teddy Bridgewater is the guy this season. That's mm-hmm. why they brought him in. But you would hope, if you're the Taysom Hill camp and BYU fans, I think that Taysom Hill is the guy, right, after this season. Um, my my concern there is Taysom Hill, when he's been the guy, has, has – and become injured, you know, three or four different times. And that's, yeah. uh, that's a fear. Like, is he the guy he is because he isn't playing a ton is a question I have to ask. Be, but a healthy Taysom Hill is a baller. We are all seeing that. He's doing tremendous in the NFL in the role he's given. Seven yards of carry as a quarterback is insane. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I, yeah, I think his ceiling I, – I don't think he's like an all-pro. I don't think he's a, perhaps as a special teamer. But I think Taysom Hill's ceiling would be – he can be a viable, quality 
starting NFL quarterback if he gets a chance to play. To, to me, man, I, I think I think he's got to stay where he's at. And mm. and the reason why is when you when you look at the value or or or, or how to how can I find a good quarterback if that means drafting him and developing him or trading whatever the case is versus a utility player it's one of those things where as a coach being an arrogant db coach i can't teach i can't teach six foot one right i can't teach four three i can do a little bit i can teach you how to catch and play football but i can't teach those things i can't teach speed athleticism i feel like that's the same thing with Taysom, man i can't teach you how to be good at everything great at everything and so as a quarterback I can take you and, and, and develop you to be great. So I feel like that route is easier, which makes you more valuable on Taysom's side, right? And so to, to have an, an, a long-lasting career, I would, I would say you got the hype. and I mean, everybody's talking about Taysom. You know what I mean? I'm just happy people are starting to join me on, on, my, on my level and how I felt yeah, it's, about it. It's so unique. I think that's the, the that, main angle here. That's, the, that's the thing. So and, 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 weird and, to see a quarterback. And you got to wonder doing. if – him playing different positions allows him to, you know, I would say protect himself better versus being a quarterback, taking, getting, getting certain hits. He can be the aggressor on a, it, uh, uh, chasing a kickoff. Yep. Right? yep ex- ex- exactly. Returning it, he's more it's, vulnerable. It's, it's, yeah. it's a little bit different. I mean, I don't know the exact angles. I've never played quarterback. You know, well, I did in sixth grade, but did I stopped growing. <laughs> in sixth grade, you were the height you are now. I, yeah. Yeah, was, yeah, 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 no, literally. Same height. This just in. The Associated Press released its uh, top 25 preseason men's basketball poll. Uh, BYU is not in it. Uh, but Gonzaga is third, received one first-place vote. Nevada is tied for seventh, who got blown out in an exhibition game against Washington over the weekend, by the way. Hmm. St. Mary's is 22nd. Hmm. What? Huh? Why is St. Mary's in the top 25? That's scratch your head. Sure. <laughs> what? That's weird. Our question of the day, other than why St. Mary's is 22nd, why are your expectations for BYU? What are your expectations for BYU football coming off the bye week? Let's get to the voice of the nation. This is the voice of the nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Nick Lee 51 on Twitter, weigh in on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. With a new quarterback and offense that is confident coming off a big showing, I expect points. There was a lot of juice in the stadium against Hawaii. I expect that to continue and for BYU to get its fifth win. Use the hashtag BYUSN. NIU is a good defense, giving up 22 a game. I'm not sure the same amount of points are going to be there. No. Hawaii's defense was not good. I, I, I'm i a believer, man. I'm a, I'm a believer. I know that. I, I'm the and Zach in train. BYU football. And, yep, yep. I'm a believer in Zach. I'm on the, I'm on the Zach train. Oh, you don't have to tell me, dude. The day after the Utah State game, I was like, make the switch. Let's go. <laughs> Coming up, some BYU opponents made some moves in the top 25 and on the field. And have you ever heard of the Gasparilla Bowl? If not, you have now. <laughs> and next, it's a Maddich Monday. What does Trevor expect from two teams coming off bye weeks in Northern Illinois and Brigham? This is BYU Sports Nation. What's the Chance is brought to you by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Today I want Eastern Greg Rebell talks with BYU football coordinators Jeff Grimes and Ed Lamb on Coordinator's Corner. That's today following BYU Sports Nation at 1 p.m. Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. That's right. They're in there now getting ready for that. Welcome back. This is BYU Sports Nation simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Brian Logan's in the house. Always a big day. If you missed the show live, you can download the podcast or watch the show on BYUSN.com. It is a Monday, and that means one thing. It is a Maddich Monday as ESPN college football analyst and friend of the program, former Cougar Trevor Maddich joins us on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. Trevor, how was the bye week for you? The bye week was great. The Cougars did not lose, and the Redskins won. That so, is, like, yeah, it's been a good bye week. That is a great week, especially since you cover a myriad of teams, the entire country for that uh, matter, but those teams in particular. So let's talk about what a bye week can do. Brian's a former player. You're a former player. What does a bye week after, say, week seven do for a team like BYU? Health. Health. Everybody except the kicker 
is playing with some sort of injury. It might be minor and they're just hurting. It might be something they'll need surgery for after the season. There's some combination of that going on. And at this point, just to be able to sleep a little bit more, to be able to recover a little bit more, it rejuvenates you physically. But more than that, it rejuvenates you mentally. Because when you're banged up a little bit, it just seems like a relentless slog and you can't see the end in sight. But when you get a little bit healthy, it it picks up your step. It picks up your attitude. So that's a good thing. Trevor, I love that you said that about the kickers because I always tell these guys that kickers aren't people. So uh, appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate that. No, well, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're human, but not quite people. Yeah, not see, quite. See, exa- exactly. Thank you. You just articulated so much better than I, I did. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so, so with – with this game, it's interesting. Um, NIU is coming off of a bye week as well. Um, with, with both of these teams, you know, getting healthy, some time off, which team do you think will benefit most from it? You know, I think BYU will, just because BYU has been such a, it's been such a crazy season. I mean, a crazy season. Plus the fact that BYU is just playing so many young guys. I mean, they tweeted out that they, they played 25 freshmen so far this year, and 10 of them have started. You know, and it's kind of good for those guys to take a step back and kind of reevaluate. And I think all that adds up to it'll really help BYU uh, a lot. And Northern Illinois, this team on defense is no joke. On offense, it's going to be interesting, though because uh, Northern Illinois has a very balanced offense. Their rushing yards per game um, is not so good, and their passing yards per game is a little worse. Rushing yards per game for Northern Illinois are 79th in the country, and their passing yards per game, they're 123rd. So, you know, I think BYU's defense has a chance to feast, and defense is so much emotion. It's so much just passion and energy. And this is a game that they'll be able to come out rested and feast on an offense that has truly struggled all year long. I think it could be a really fun day for the Cougar defense. What do you think the BYU offense can do against that uh, NIU defense, which has been known for a while to be really good, uh, and they're finding their stride now in the MAC 4 0. Sutton Smith, a great story. We'll talk about him in a second. But Zach Wilson, the freshman quarterback, had the one start, tremendous performance against Hawaii by week. What do you expect from Zach Wilson and the Cougar offense Saturday? Well, what I expect is precision. What I expect is uh, limit mistakes. Because you're right about this Northern Illinois defense. I mean, they, they lost to Iowa and to Utah this year so far, but they shut them both out of the end zone in the first half. This Northern Illinois defense is really, really good. Now, you can wear them down if you're physically superior and have more depth than they do, and that's what happened in those games. Their third loss was to Florida State, uh, who actually picked that day to kind of rise up and look like an actual football team, when, unfortunately, for Northern Illinois. But this, this is a defense that will make you pay for every mistake. They'll make you earn every yard, especially on the ground. So I think what BYU's offense needs to do is not think that they have arrived because they ran all over Hawaii. Hawaii's defense, bless their hearts, is one of the worst in the country. It was a very good debut opponent for Wilson. And it was a very good chance for BYU to get a little precision going on with their passing game, which they did, by the way. But I think it's important to take a step back and remember that even though you can't take anything away from the positive performance of BYU's offense against Hawaii, this is a completely different animal, this defense. And so the first thing they need to do is don't lose it on offense. Don't commit the turnovers to give Northern Illinois' offense a short field. Force the Huskies to drive the field against a defense that should overmatch the Huskies' offense in most ways. I think this is a um, it's an opportunity for the offense to kind of reset. Now, if they read all the clippings about how great they are and about how great they did, I mean, when you talk about Zach Wilson, you look at his performance against Hawaii, and it was good. It was an outstanding performance. And when you look at the numbers in it, it's even better. I mean, remember the quarterback rating. 100 is perfect, 50 is average. Zach Wilson, the youngest quarterback ever to start for BYU, his quarterback rating was 80 against Hawaii. So the best thing he can do is just focus on his, his chemistry or American lit and don't even take into account what people are saying about him as a passer because he did well. Don't take it away. But, man, he's got to remember physics because the laws of physics are such that no matter how good a quarterback played against Hawaii, 
if a football will still not be able to dematerialize, pass through the chest of a defensive back, and then rematerialize on the other side in the arms of his receiver. The laws of physics still work for Zach Wilson, so he's got to remember that when he plays this Northern Illinois defense, that he had a great debut, but he's not Superman yet. I, I wish you were my teacher, my physics teacher. I would have probably... Got an A, maybe even. Went to, maybe even went to. <laughs> you got an A on the dematerialization of footballs. Yes, that's a it's an important principle for quarterbacks. And that quiz, it yeah. makes oh, it makes so much more sense. Um, so it's 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 you know no no question that when BYU runs the ball well, usually they they end up winning the game. Um, when they don't, you know it's it's a uh, it's a long long night or game afternoon whatever you want to call it. Um, do you feel like? the Cougars will be able to run the ball on this NIU defense? I think they will. I think part of the reason is that you'll have a quarterback that will run the ball a bit better. Tanner Mangum was mobile within the pocket. I don't think defense is worried about him torching them on the scramble or on zone read kind of runs. Uh, he would do it. He was willing, but he just didn't have quite that, that gear. Zach Wilson has more suddenness to his running. In other words, he can make a guy miss. He can start and stop and make you shake your head and go, wow, that was pretty good for a guy that size. Not that he's a, a great runner, but he is more of a threat. And when you add that threat, it makes a difference to how the defense plays. Just look at Ohio State uh, this year compared to last just in running. Last year they had a running quarterback in J.T. Barrett, and they were number one in the Big Ten, number eight in the nation in yards per rush. This year they've got a passing quarterback who's a much, much better passing uh, quarterback than J.T. Barrett, but he's not, he doesn't run much in that offense. And their rushing attack, instead of being eighth in the nation, now this year they're eighth in the Big Ten. Mm. they've gone way, way down in their yards per carry. And it's because defenses no longer have to worry much about a running quarterback. Well, BYU has that advantage kind of reversed a little bit. Again, I'm not saying that they'll turn into to Taysom Hill-led team here. But the defense has to account for Wilson in ways they didn't with Mangum, and I think that will help their running attack. We're talking to ESPN's Trevor Maddich on a Maddich Monday as the Cougars get ready for Northern Illinois on Saturday afternoon. Sutton Smith is a tremendous story, Trevor. Uh, 6'1", 238 pounds, defensive lineman, so perhaps a little undersized. But this guy led the nation in sacks last year, 12th this season with seven, won a game. What do you expect from Sutton Smith in Provo? Well, I expect him to, to do well. Just because, you know, he's going to have some opportunities. Now, when, when you look at what he'll have to do and what BYU should do to affect him, I think that should help, help the Cougars. Now, when I say that, what I mean is when you've got a great pass rusher, the best thing you can do is run at him. The best thing you can do is hit him in the mouth and make him play the run first. And I think that's what they'll do. Because if BYU has to sit back and throw the ball in the pocket and you let a pass rusher like that tee off, you got problems. And as good as BYU's offensive line has played at times this year, you don't want to give that kind of a one-dimensional look to a pass rusher like him. But at the same time, if you hit him in the mouth, and he's got to play the run first. And then play-action pass is even more effective because you delay him. So really this all goes back to what you said earlier. How will BYU do in the run? If they do well in the run, I don't think they'd have to, too much to worry about, even from a great pass rusher like that. Trevor, in a, an article over the weekend, asked if Taysom Hill could become the greatest utility player in the NFL of all time. What are you seeing and liking from Taysom in New Orleans right now? Taysom combines the joyfulness, childlike joyfulness of football with the mentality of a linebacker in a quarterback. That makes him so much fun to watch. I mean, what quarterback covers kickoffs and then makes tackles and then jumps up like he's a linebacker and he's all fired up. And the thing is, that, that feeds his team. They love that about the, him. It's not that he's the most, you know, the most hellacious, you know, kickoff coverage guy or that kind of a player in the NFL. He's not. He's very, very good, though. But the fact that he's a quarterback doing all that, his teammates feed off of it, and he makes them better because of the energy that he brings. Uh, I love that they're using him in more and more ways and more and more ways on the offense. Uh, 
And I think that's pretty smart of Peyton, their coach, because it's a matter of getting your best skill on the field in every given situation. That's something Boise State used to be so good at, that they didn't always have the player that was the best receiver or the best running back or the best tight end. But they had a receiver that was super quick out of a break or a running back that had phenomenal hands or a tight end that was they couldn't block that well, but, man, could he get down the middle of the field. And they were masters at getting those guys' skills onto the field. And so as a practical matter, and I'm talking about Boise of as they were ascending. Uh, Boise of a few years ago. Now they've got more NFL players in different places. But when it comes to Taysom Hill, it's the same kind of thing that, that they have noticed in New Orleans that he can do a lot of things well. And they said, well, why not put him on the field and let him do some of those things and see what happens? And it turns out that he's succeeding at it and it's firing up his team. I love it. A healthy Taysom Hill is a tremendous football player. We have known that for a while. Okay, let's finish with this, Trevor. Who are your top four teams now that Ohio State lost at Purdue? Well, it's not Ohio State. My goodness, Ohio State. They did not show up. (laughs) I mean, listen, I expected Ohio State to uh, get torched in big plays by that Purdue offense. Ohio State's one of the worst defenses in the nation at giving up big plays, and Purdue was number one of the Big Ten at generating big plays. So I expected that to happen. But I also expected the Ohio State offense to completely overpower the Purdue defense, and the opposite happened. And there's no accounting in college football for what happens week in and week out. That's just crazy stuff. But right now, Alabama's still my number one team. I've got Clemson as a tight second. Notre Dame at number three. And then it's a toss-up for me between LSU and Michigan at number four. I'm still going to take LSU at number four right now because I think they're a bit more balanced. But Michigan is on the rise. I will say this about Alabama, though. They, as great as they've been, they have not been challenged. And so we see what a great thrower Tua Tango Valo is a quarterback. And he is. But he hasn't yet ever in Alabama had to manage situations where it matters for the outcome of the game, meaning make decisions about when to throw, where to throw, when to take a sack, when not to take a sack, etc. Time management, clock management. He's not had to do any of that. He just dropped back, drops back and lets it wing, and he's been doing a phenomenal job at that. So I still don't know how good of a quarterback he is. All I know is that he's a phenomenal thrower. And I'm waiting for that first big test to see if he's able to handle stuff. LSU and Alabama both have a bye, and they play in Death Valley on November 3rd. That should be epic. I can't wait. Trevor, we appreciate the time, as always, and we'll talk to you next Monday. All right. Happy to join you guys. Thanks. Thanks to Trevor Maddox for joining us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future. Coming up, BYU soccer finds itself tied atop the WCC with three games left. What are Coach Rockwood's expectations down the stretch? She'll join us in studio. Huge game with top 10 Santa Clara coming up Saturday in Provo. And next, three BYU opponents find themselves ranked in the top 25 in football and one just outside how they fared last weekend. This is BYU Sports Nation. Tuesdays at 8 Eastern, watch BYU football with Kalani Satake as host Greg Rebell talks with head, the head ball coach, a player, and an assistant coach. It's Tuesdays at 8 Eastern on BYU TV, BYU Radio, and the apps. Look at our hardworking crew in uh, production control room, too. Look at hey, every, ben. Wave, everybody. Ben. Wave. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, hey. <laughs> there, there, there are so many people that put this show together on TV and radio. Master control all the way to captioning, the graphics, the camera, everything. They do such a good job. So shout us. out to everybody involved with the show. You just see the two of us up here. But uh, a lot of people involved in making this happen. Welcome back. I'm Jerem. He's Brian. We have a whole crew of awesome people whose names we don't have time to mention. But let's get to today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. BYU basketball kicked off the season with the Cougar tip-off as Yoli Childs had a game-high 35 points. The white team beat the blue team 81-77. As Spencer always says, it's another Cougar winner. Joshir Hardnett and Luke Worthington at 18 apiece. Nice. Three former Cougars were in action this weekend, and Kyle Van Noy scored his first NFL touchdown after scooping up a Dante Hightower blocked punt. Number one BYU women's volleyball sweeps Pepperdine 26-24, 26-13, and 25-8. That's just mean. (laughs) Jones Perry led the team with a double-double of 14 digs and 12 kills, the pride of Copper Hills. The Cougars are 20-0. Nice. BYU women's soccer beat St. Mary's 3-1. Saturday, sophomore McKaylee Moore scored two goals. We will talk with head coach Jennifer Rockwood coming up in the next segment. Huge week 
uh, for BYU women's soccer at home, including a game with Santa Clara on Saturday. As we always do, uh, let's look back at how Cougar opponents past and future have fared. Let's start with Northern Illinois, who comes in this Saturday. The Huskies enjoyed a bye week like BYU. NIU, 0-3 in non-conference play, but 4-0 and in the MAC. Mm. Mm. A battle of two 4-3 and teams, by the way. Well, you say... Rhett ripping through for 308 yards and four touchdowns and a 56 to 28 beatdown of Colorado State. I watched that game actually. I had to. I kept turning it off and then turning it back on because I was bored and then turning it off and then turning it back uh, on. On Friday night, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was that bad. Uh, the five and two Broncos travel to the Air Force Academy this weekend. UMass, the Minutemen weren't ready against Coastal Carolina, losing 24 13 last week. UMass two and six plays UConn this week. New Mexico State. New Mexico State helped Georgia Southern become bowl eligible. <laughs> <laughs> One way of looking at it. <laughs> Falling to the Eagles, 48-31. to 31. The Aggies are 2-6 and six on the season. Utah, the Utes are 5-2 and two after a 41-28 home win against USC. Utah number 23 in the AP poll this week and has a bye week. Now a look at how the Cougars' past opponents have fared. Arizona. Arizona drops to 3-5 and five on the season following a 31-30 loss at UCLA. 19th ranked Oregon is up next for the Wildcats. I was w- without Khalil Tate, and uh, UCLA got the best of them. UCLA has struggled, but a couple of wins this past couple of weeks. Cal, the Golden Bears throttled Oregon State 49-7, moving to 4-3 and three on the year. They host 15th ranked Washington next week. Wisconsin, Jonathan Taylor rushed for 159 yards and a 49-20 Wisconsin win over Illinois and climbed three spots. And the AP poll to 20th. Good for them. The Badgers now 5-2 and two, travel to Northwestern this weekend. I think we're all hoping Wisconsin's still decent. Yes. And they are. I hope they win the Super Bowl. Mac knees. <laughs> uh, yeah. The Cowboys lost 45-17 to Incarnate Word and are 5-2. and two. Hmm. Washington. Washington topples Colorado 27-13 and remains atop the Pac-12 North Division and ranked 15th in the AP poll. Washington's good. Washington State had quite the weekend. That was a fun showing there on uh, college game day. Utah State, the Aggies continue to roll after a 24-16 win at Wyoming. Utah State 6-1 for the first time since 1974. Wow. And two spots out of the AP Top 25. They'll host New Mexico this weekend. They're legit. The Aggies are legit. They're, they're, they're cool. Hawaii drops 6-3. <laughs> this, this guy lost it there. Jeez. Hawaii drops 6-3 on the season after a 40-22 loss in Nevada. The Rainbow Warriors travel to Fresno State next. So two losses in a row for Hawaii. Uh, BYU and now Nevada. Okay, some uh, BYU bowl projections. I'll read them. You react. Here we go. Okay. Brett McMurphy uh, projects BYU versus South Florida, who's undefeated right now, by the way, in the Gasparilla Bowl in St. Petersburg, uh, Florida, December twenty. That'd be amazing. That would that'd be, be awesome, that'd right? be that'd be amazing. Yeah, it would be a road game against South Florida in Florida, but yeah. ESPN's Mitch Sherman BYU versus East Eastern Michigan in the Frisco Bowl. Hmm. That'd be in the Metroplex of Dallas. You like that? Uh, well, that's warm. I mean, it's warm. Yeah. Okay. In December, is it warm? I don't really like the team. I don't like the team. On December 19th, will it be warm? Oh, actually, yeah, right. I don't know. ESPN's <laughs> uh, Kyle Bonagura, BYU versus Memphis in the Birmingham Bowl. Do we really want The rematch. That? Do we the really rematch. want that? Yes, I, uh, I want it. CBS Sports' <laughs> Jerry Palm, BYU versus Florida International in the Boca Raton Bowl. Pass. Another Florida game in Florida against a team in Florida. Pass, please. SB Nation, BYU versus Baylor in the Independence Bowl. Power 5 team. I mean, yeah, for, I mean, for the brand, but yeah, for, I don't know. They just... Vengeance for not being invited. They're just the not, like, like Baylor just, they, the brand of that school, they just, it's just going down. It's mm, yes, not what it for was, serious so. off-the-field issues, yeah. yeah. And sporting news, BYU versus Temple in the Armed Forces Bowl. That seems appropriate. No? Pass. Nothing? Pass. You got really excited on the first <laughs> one. You were not juiced about the other ones. <laughs> nope. Coming up, BYU soccer head coach Jen Rockwood is in Studio B. Her team scored eight goals last week. Can they keep it going this week at home? We'll ask her some big matches, including that one with Top 10 Santa Clara coming up this weekend. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Tuesday nights on BYU TV breakdown. Cougar football with Dave McCann, Uncle B., Myself and David Nixon on After Further Review. We have a bye week, but we will return next Tuesday at 7 Eastern on BYU TV and the app. So tune in and get educated.
Next week. Next week. Yeah, next week. Yeah. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Let's welcome in our next guest, Jennifer Rockwood, head coach of the BYU Cougars. She's been the coach since what feels like, uh, you know, 1978 or something. <laughs> you've, you've been the coach since the beginning. I've been which, around a while. Yeah. Which has been awesome. Yeah. Uh, your team's on fire right now. Congratulations on a pair of road wins at Pacific 5-1, St. Mary's 3-1. What went well in those matches? We scored some goals. That's nice, you know. Goal in soccer, score goals, and keep the ball out of your net. And uh, we did that, and we wanted to make sure we came off a, a, a big weekend for us, two on the road. It's our third weekend in a row uh, on the road, so that's been kind of challenging. Um, the girls reacted really well to it. You know, we scored five goals in, in our Thursday game and then three goals on Saturday. And so, uh, you know, things are rolling for us. Do, do you see that your team maybe responds better or plays better um, when they're away? Um, we've done pretty well. We've been on the road a lot uh, early on in the season. Um, you know, it was Fullerton, Nebraska, Texas A&M. So um, hopefully, you know, that's paid off and we've got some good experience. And the girls are a lot of fun to be around. I, uh, they really enjoy being around each other. And so traveling's not, uh, you know, too challenging. It's just tiring, but uh, uh, still good times. The key uh, for your team, it seems, is scoring multiple goals. Obviously, that's going to equate to success, but let's specify you're eight zero and one when scoring two plus goals this season. You haven't lost, mm-hmm. and then one and four when you score zero or one. So is the score is the key scoring two plus yeah. in the game for you? Yeah, I think in soccer that's kind of what we've always talked about is you need to score two goals. You know, anything can happen in soccer. You could you know maybe draw a PK, which you know that's happened to us, or someone hits an amazing shot uh, in the game uh, from your opponents. You know, maybe they don't get too many looks, but they're still able to score. So those kind of things are going to happen in our sport, and so you just have to expect to score two goals, and you know. Most likely, you know, you have a good chance of winning. The percentages are pretty high. And we've got a lot of girls scoring goals, so we're not just relying on one or two people. Three regular season matches left. What do you guys need to do to um, maximize your potential to make it to your post- the postseason? Yeah, I think... First and foremost, we're really excited to be uh, back at Southfield in front of our fans. Um, you know, last time we played uh, here, again, a while ago, but great matches, Gonzaga and Portland, and we played very well. Uh, so just getting our confidence back on, on that field, moving the ball, um, continuing just to build on what we've been working on all year. And I think we're getting better and better. And um, you know, like I said, we're getting great contributions from so many people in our attack. Uh, our defense is solid, and uh, we're getting great contributions from our bench, you know, and you need that, and that's something we yeah. didn't have as much last year. I, I'm a big believer in um, in teams peaking at the right time, mm-hmm. right? And you, that's how you're smiling because yeah. you know. <laughs> so as, important. Yeah, yeah as, a, as a coach. So um, how, how do you manage that as a coach and – I mean, it seems like you guys are kind of on, the, on that roll, right, and, and managing it, getting there, and then keeping it. Yeah, so much about it is recovery and, and making sure that you're healthy and excited. And, you know, it's a challenging time because midterms and, and the stresses of all the other stuff uh, on top of soccer, yeah. um, you know, giving them an extra day off, you know, today to get their – Things in order and, and let their you, bodies re, uh, recover a little bit. <laughs> the so former players like, I need yeah. a day off, too. I think us coaches need a day off as well. We brought you in for this, though. We appreciate it. Yeah, 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 for sure, for yeah. sure. But I, I think just uh, trying to stay positive and um, remind the girls what they're good at, remind the team what makes us successful. Um, we'll have a big challenge this weekend with, uh, obviously, San Francisco. They're fourth in the conference right now. They've had a great season. And then Santa Clara is having one of their best seasons in quite some time. So uh, excited to play two really good teams uh, at home and you know I think we're ready to go and like you said those are two big matches so let's talk about how those fit in to the context of the potential postseason you don't have a conference tournament Mm -hmm. so the regular season champ gets the auto bid as of yesterday 73rd in RPI so do you feel like you're in an at-large position should you not win the league or is it we let's just go win the league yeah based on where we are right now I mean a couple games ago uh, we were up you know within that bubble uh, around the 40s um, you so, know, it, losing so it dropped by who you it, played? Yeah, it's mm. dropped. Uh, but it'll go up with Santa Clara in theory, We hope right? so. You just, you just never know how that whole formula is going to work. Um, obviously, losing to Pepperdine dropped us. Um, but beating St. Mary's in Pacific, you know, they've struggled a little bit this year, and it just really has dropped us down. We've seen that in the past when we've had a much higher RPI, how that's kind of pulled us down a little bit too. But we, we have control of our own destiny, and that's all you can ask for at this point in time. We don't want to rely on other people or an at-large bid. We need to win the conference championships so we get the automatic. Yeah. What's the key to that against uh, not only San Francisco Thursday, but like you said, Santa Clara, fifth in the RPI, top 10 team on Saturday night on mm-hmm. senior night. That is yeah. a, that's a huge match. Yeah, huge match. Um, 
just like we've done before, you know, we got to score two goals and keep the ball out of our net. And, uh, you know, even Santa Clara, as well as they've done, they've given up a bunch of goals this year against uh, all the teams. I think they played Gonzaga. You know, Chris had them last night. And um, that was their first shutout in a while. So, you know, we hope and think that we can put some goals in. And they're a very talented team and probably one of the better teams we've seen all year. So we'll, we'll have to be at our very best to expect those results. What do you guys do for, for senior night? We, I know when I play, we, we got blankets and stuff. <laughs> what, what do you guys do? Well, we actually just have one senior. Last year we had 10. Um, Maddie Sidoy Gates is our only senior, our captain, our fearless leader. Sid nice. the Kid is great about the first her. Tour. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all about Sid <laughs> on Saturday. Um, Usually Friday evening, we have all of our players and our family together for a kind of a video that highlights the seniors and, and recognizes them. Highlights the it, senior. Yeah, yeah the senior. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we found that sometimes the day of the game, it gets a little bit too emotional to do that. So we kind of tone it down right before the game and really celebrate it both be- the night before the game and then at our end of the year celebration. You learned a few yeah. things in 24 yes, years. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I cried all, all yeah. day. <laughs> Let's, Literally. We have a brand new flag. Okay. Do you mind signing this one? Oh, love to. Okay, awesome. Jen, we appreciate okay. the time. You can watch the women's soccer team Thursday night, 9 Eastern on BYU TV. Listen on BYU Radio. Okay, appreciate thanks, it, guys. Jen. Yeah, thanks. Okay, and this just in, by the way, we do have the kickoff time and broadcast info for BYU at Boise State on November 3rd. It is a uh, broadcast time of 8.15 Mountain Time, 10.15 Eastern on ESPN2 as well as BYU Radio. So BYU fans, uh, used to that <laughs> kick time. Because it's yeah, happening yeah. a lot. So the kick time, probably 8.20 or, or 21 Mountain Time. So do we go 10, like 20 a, are we going like an hour 30 on countdown? One fifteen, But yeah, uh, probably an hour 15. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Coming up, we have two words for you. Taysom and Jimmer. Yeah, you're, I don't even need to say anything. This is BYU Sports Station. Let's go to break. <laughs> Whatever. Let's go. <laughs> Thanks to today's guests, Trevor Maddich and Jennifer Rockwood. Sorry to Dennis Pitta. No time for you, bro. We had time, Dennis. Unbelievable. No, we didn't. If you missed some of today's show, download the podcast on iTunes or Google Play. Let's whip it. It's time for the Cougar Whip Around. Football. The kick time and broadcast info has been released for BYU at Boise State on November 3rd. The game will kick at 10.15 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. Basketball. BYU basketball men's team specifically kicked off the season with the Cougar tip-off. Yoli Childs, a game-high 35 points. The white team beat the blue 81-77. And the AP preseason top 25 has been re-released. Three Cougar opponents are ranked Gonzaga Gonzaga at third, Nevada at seventh, and Mississippi State at 15. What happened to St. Mary's at 22? They just magically went away? Okay. Cougars in the NFL. Kyle Van Oy scooped up a blocked... Punt and took it to the house for his first touchdown in the NFL with the Patriots yesterday in a seven-point win versus the Bears. The best player in the universe had six carries for 35 yards, including who is a that for those who don't know? Taysom Hill. They okay. know who they knew. They know who I'm talking about, man. He had six carries for 35 yards, including a converted fourth down fake punt. He also had two tackles in a 24 to 23. New Orleans Saints victory over the Baltimore Ravens. Make your PATs. Fred Warner had four tackles in a 39-10 San Francisco 49ers loss to the L.A. Rams. Volleyball. Number one BYU women's volleyball sweeps Pepperdine 26-24, 13-8, 26-24, 25-13, 25-8. Jones Perry led the team with a double-double of 14 digs and 12 kills. The Cougars are 20-0. Why are you laughing? Soccer. (laughs) For lots of reasons. BYU women's soccer beat St. Mary's 3-1 Saturday. Sophomore McKaylee Moore scored two goals. <laughs> Jimmer! Ferdinand had 38.66 six rebounds and five steals in Shanghai's 87-83 win over the Bay and Chang Rockets to open the season yesterday. <laughs> that was a good one. Cougars overseas. <laughs> we don't know how to say those names either. Don't worry. Brandon Davies had 14 po- we had stuff crashing off the set. Awesome. Brandon Davies had 14 points and six rebounds in a Zalgiris loss to another team in Lithuania. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> Charles Abuo had 18 points and four rebounds in a 82 to 78 victory over or, uh, victory for Blos, Blois, Blois in France. Sure. Tyler Haas had 15 okay. points and four rebounds in Spain in a uh, Huesca victory. Ooh, nice. Elijah Bryan has 17 points, four assists, and six rebounds in a Hapol. 
Yeah, this has been awesome. <laughs> Hapol Elayat's victory sure. in Israel. Yeah. yeah. Today, today's rise and shout goes to the women's volleyball team, 20 and 0. Let's give it to women's soccer as well. They kind of struggled out of the gates a little bit, played a really tough schedule. They are cruising as well. Huge week for them. Women's volleyball stays undefeated. Well done to both of those teams. Let's get to the voice of the nation. Our question of the day, what are your expectations for BYU football coming off the bye week? The elite voice of the day. Presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Celebrating 50 years at Mark Scott 35. I expect confidence. Although it's been up and down, there's more to be excited about. We should get some guys back from injury and bodies rested for the remainder of the season. The conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook using the hashtag BYUSN. The show is on demand at BYUSN.com. Brian, I'm Jerem. Shout out to George Imboden. Coming up, Coordinator's Corner next on BYU TV and BYU Radio. See ya! I almost hit the camera on that.